Happy Friday, Floss Tube. My name's Caroline, and welcome back. This is uh, this is my weekly Stitch With Me video. As you can see, today I am working on a very scary Halloween piece. My only Halloween whip. Uh, this is the Witch's Wheel by Glendon Place. That's what it's going to look like when it's all finished. My friend Tracy stitched this and is entirely the reason why I purchased this pattern and kitted it up immediately because when I saw it finished, it's just, uh, it's so much fun. And I'm not, uh, I'm really not a Halloween stitcher, but for some reason this is just, it, I don't know, it's so fun. It's so fun. So it is my only Halloween whip, so I only ever work on it in October every year. So I haven't touched that since last October. And I think last October, I only, I think I only did this, uh, this little area right there. That's it. So, but that's okay. That's okay. For me, this is just a fun thing to work on during the Halloween season. So I am stitching this on the called for fabric, which is, it's a 32 count Belfast Linen in the colorway Solar. So as you can see, it's this amazing kind of uh, effect on this, on, done on this fabric, and it's so vivid in real life. And I think it's so fun to have this, this piece stitched on it. Other than the black, anything that you see in here that's a color is a bead. So there, this is really a heavily beaded piece. So there are five different colors of beads and I have none of them. So once I've done stitching all of the black, then I'll have to go ahead and order those beads. But, you know, considering how quickly my progress is going on this and I only work on it for a few weeks every October, I think I'm a ways off from ordering beads. So I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be just fine. Uh, what else can I tell you about this? 32 count and lots of beads called for fabric. That's about it. I am stitching this with DMC 310. My favorite, my favorite black. DMC, good old DMC 310. It's a goodie. And I'm going to have to be creative with where I put my pattern here so that I can see it while we're having a chat. Move my light a little bit there. I think that might work. Now I'm going to have to, let's see, just thinking I don't have a way to easily mark my pattern. I haven't been, I haven't been highlighting my pattern because it's, I mean, it's all, it's fairly straightforward, but I just will put a little marker on the page where I am. I think that'll help. There. Okay. So, now for the news of the day. <laughs> what a difference a week makes. Wouldn't you agree? Let's make sure my legs are going the same way since it's been so long since I worked on this. What a difference a week makes. As you can see from the footage that I put in right before I started chatting with you, we have a new family member. I introduced her very briefly at the end of Monday's floss tube video, which actually came out on Tuesday because we adopted this dog on Tuesday, Tuesday night. She came home with us. Uh, we were home by, we, we, she came from the Sarnia Humane Society. We left London at 3.40 as soon as John got home from work and we picked up Nicholas from school. We drove uh, very quickly. I mean, we followed all rules and regulations, but made our way to Sarnia because we knew that they were going to be closing, uh, you know, regular business hours and we wanted to make sure that we got in there quickly. 
we ha she was recommended to us by a friend of ours who volunteers at the Humane Society there in Sarnia and um, she she started texting me and said I think we found your dog we think we found a perfect dog for you and you need to come quick and see her because she she she's just a lovely lovely dog and so we hopped in the car we drove to Sarnia which is about an hour away from London and uh, we met her and we agreed that we thought she was pretty fantastic and that she would make a great addition to our family. So we, we asked them, you know, could we fill out the application now and see if we could be approved? And um, if possible, you know, could we take her home with us today? So they agreed to uh, let us fill out the application and we went and visited the kitten room while we waited and had, oh, it was, there's people, there are so many animals that need homes. It's just, it's, you know, I feel like Bob Barker, spay and neuter your pets because holy Toledo, so many, I mean, how many different organizations are around the world that, that help animals that need homes and all of them are, are filled with animals who, you know, who need to who need homes this kitten room was so, oh, so cute they were so little and tiny and Nicholas said can we bring home <laughs> he wanted to bring home all of them which of course you know is is a natural reaction but we told him we were there for a dog today and you know if we if we needed a cat fix we always had Sasha to to cuddle and love so he was uh, understanding of course of that uh, and then they approved us and we brought her home and her name is Luna. She's six years old and uh, she is an American bulldog mix. We have no idea what she's mixed with, but we don't really care. She's, she's just a mix of perfect dog. She's a big girl. Uh, she's probably, she's about the same size as Daria, but without the fur. Do you know what I mean? So she, she kind of appears leaner than Daria was, but um, she's a fair bit more powerful. She's, not that Daria wasn't powerful, but this dog, uh, Luna, which we discovered on our way out of the Humane Society because there was a cat roaming around loose in the front room. I guess they have a resident cat who's kind of been there forever, and so he has the run of the place. And uh, we discovered on the way out that Luna has a very, very high prey drive. And um, if you're not familiar with, with animals per se, um, when dogs have a prey drive, they they can't really be trusted with small animals, you know, rabbits, squirrels, cats, small, small dogs, um, et cetera, which, which makes sense, right? Because that's their instinct is to, uh, to, uh, be helpful and get rid of the problem, which they see as a problem. And, you know, so that I suspect answers, I've kind of put off People have been asking about Sasha and whether, you know, uh, she and, and the dog will be okay. I, I've, I wanted to kind of really make sure of the situation before I talked about it because it's unfortunate. It's, it's really unfortunate, but um, uh, they're not, they're not going to be friends anytime soon. <laughs> so for, am I putting this leg the right way? Yes, I am. For Sasha's safety, we have to make sure that they don't interact uh, without, you know, absolute supervision and Luna being on the leash, you know, restrained while they uh, get to know each other. And it may never, they may never be able to coexist. I, I'm just not sure at this point, but for Sasha's safety. Now, she is a little monkey, I'll tell you that, because... She, of course, continues to come to the front door, 
But now she sort of, you know, rubs herself against the front door and, and, you know, looks directly because we have windows on either side of the front door. And so they can see each other at eye level. And she, she sort of rubs herself in front of the door and, and sort of taunts Luna a little bit. Um, it's, <laughs> you want to say, you better get out of there. But I think she, I think she knows what she's doing. She's teasing Luna. So... Uh, and Luna is not happy about it. So we'll have to keep them separated, which is, you know, unfortunate because I love Sasha, but luckily Sasha has a wonderful family of her own. And you know, it's really funny. I was, uh, walking Luna a couple days ago, just after we first got her. Um, so oh, I guess it was Wednesday morning and it was the school we were headed to school and I ran into a, a mum friend who was walking her dog. And, you know, we were chatting about Luna. Make sure I'm doing the right thing here. So that one should have four more. And this one should only have three. So I've got one too many here. Uh, we were chatting about Luna and I told her, I said, yep, she's she's absolutely perfect, except for the fact that uh, she's she's not going to be good with cats and she said oh do you have a cat and I said well not really but our neighbor's cat you know likes to come and, and visit she said oh I know that cat she said I know that gray and white cat so the more people I talk to in this neighborhood the more people I find out that Sasha makes the rounds in this neighborhood and is quite a popular lady so I don't think she's going to have any trouble attaching herself to another daytime snack and nap place, if you know what I mean. So, but I, I'm going to miss having her in here. So, but I can't even begin to tell you how thrilled I am to have Luna here with us. She's a lot like Daria in many ways in that she's much more of a people. Why won't this, why won't that go in? Keep splitting the fabric here. I don't know why there. She's much more of a people dog than a dog dog. She wants to be with her people all the time. Now, I know that part of that is, uh, you know, a bit of anxiety. Um, she tends to follow me all over the house. When I, when I move rooms, she gets up and she follows me. So she hasn't slept a lot during the day over the last few days because she's been a bit anxious, you know, when somebody leaves the room. She wants to follow them. So I have been allowing her on the bed, and, and we do. We have always allowed our dogs on the bed if they if they want to go up there. I just have an extra, um, I have an extra comforter that is strictly for the dog. So when the dog is going on the bed, the extra comforter gets put on top of the bed, and then that's sort of her bed. On top of the bed, if that makes sense. And when she's downstairs, when I'm when I'm sewing, I have a woolen blanket folded up in quarters on the floor beside me and she she stays there okay three more so six four seven six four seven three more and then one less okay this is a tricky pattern to be stitching while I'm chatting with you so she uh, she she doesn't startle with loud noises, so she hasn't minded the sewing machine at all. Um, she hasn't minded, you know, I had to package up an order, a, a box the other day, and I used the tape gun, which is really, really loud. When the tape comes off of it, it is a really, it's both a startling noise and a super annoyingly loud noise that goes on for a while, because I usually have to use quite a lot, of, a lot of tape on, you know, both the packages and the box and whatnot. So. Uh, she didn't even, didn't even bat an eye. We walked past a enormous 
uh, garbage truck that was collecting the other day, totally fine. No problem at all. So here's where I can't, John and I can't figure out, we just can't figure out why she was there. <clears throat> you know, why she clearly had a family who trained her. She clearly had a family who treated her well and didn't abuse her, didn't scare her. I mean, she's she's not afraid of us at all. When we had Eddie, he couldn't look at John for months. I mean, he was petrified. But this dog is, you know, once she gets used to you, she's so easily adaptable to situations and, and happy and well-trained. You know, she knows all of her commands. She heals on a walk. She's, you know, she barks at the door. We, you know, she alerts like crazy. She heard somebody open the mailbox on the outside of our house yesterday and, you know, alerted me and I didn't hear it. You know, she's, she's incredible. We know for a fact that her family, her owner, surrendered her to the Humane Society. And we can't quite figure out why, because the, you know they have to fill out paperwork when they bring in their animal to surrender them. And the reason they left on the paperwork was that she had separation anxiety when left alone at home and needed needed a family who could, um, you know, walk her a few extra times a day and, and be home with her a little bit more. And then it said, you know, can she be left alone? And they said, no, she can't be left alone. And then that was it. That was the only reasoning given. Well, she's six years old. I mean, how do you find, how do you wait until an animal is six years old to discover that they have separation anxiety. I mean, I, I'm trying so hard not to be judgmental. I really am. But I think I'm being a little judgmental. This dog, I mean, can you imagine how confusing that must be for an animal? Anyway, you know, um, I'm just glad she's ours now. I'm just glad she's ours. We're very attached already, if you couldn't tell. If you couldn't tell. And she is sound asleep. She just gave the biggest sigh. You know, I, here's the thing. And here's why I shouldn't judge because I don't know the other side of the story. I don't know if they lost their jobs and they couldn't afford to keep her anymore. I don't know if something happened to the relationship and they truly didn't have time anymore for the dog and they felt bad about that and maybe that's why they put on the form that she had separation anxiety. Maybe, you know, it, I really shouldn't judge because, again, I have zero clue why they chose to give her up. So I'm going to focus instead on the fact that I'm incredibly grateful now that she's ours. And that's a pretty darn good thing. So there you have it. So her name is Luna, and we love her. We love her very much. <sighs> All right, so there you go. There's my story. There's my story. There's Luna's story. So I suspect you're going to be seeing a lot more of her on floss tube. She's having a few health problems at the minute. Um, you know, not unexpected ones that would happen to a dog under stress. Uh, she, she has a bit of... Uh, you're either a urinary tract infection, possibly a bladder infection. Um, she's having a bit of digestive issues because she's probably, you know, she's been on three different foods in the last 
uh, three weeks. So that's to be expected, right? So I took her to the vet yesterday and she definitely has some kind of infection. We're just trying to figure out what kind it is. And I have to take her back later this afternoon with a urine sample. Have you ever tried to collect a urine sample from a dog? This is a lovely conversation, isn't it? <laughs> if you're if you're dog people, you'll get it. And if you're not, I'm sorry. You probably tuned out long ago. But uh, I guess that's kind of been my life the last couple of days. And the Stitch With Me videos generally tend to be a bit of a... Uh, where I just kind of tell you all about what's going on. All right, I'm going to come and work on... Do I want to work here or do I want to, nah, let's stay where we were. Okay, so we had the three and the one and we're going to come down to the bottom. This, there we go. I have a funny feeling this is a Bowen needle. It's not quite as sharp of a, oh, I did a terrible job attaching that. Let's do that again. There, that's better. Uh, Bowens have slightly less of a sharp tip on them. So I always can tell, yep, see look what I did. I pulled it right out. Shoot. All right, let's try that again. And now I'm really making a mess of this. Let's try this again. I snipped it off. Let's reattach that. I like to fold my DMC in half when I'm stitching two strands. Purely for ease. I find it easier. Quicker. Just me. Uh... So yeah, I'm going to take her back to the vet later this afternoon and have all that stuff analyzed and find out what's going on and what kind of antibiotic she needs to be on and, uh, and then we'll be all set. Okay, so there should have been three more and three more and then the next one should also have three more. So that should be a three-way. Yep, yeah, I think I'm on the right track. This is a tricky one to stitch while I talk and the pattern is kind of far away from my face so that I don't have it in the screen but there we go so Halloween stitching it's fun to watch other people do their Halloween stitching but this is this is so far the only Halloween piece I've ever really been uh, tempted to stitch and it's so funny because it never struck me how mean looking these witches were until I had the face of one of them actually stitched and staring back at me from the fabric as I work on her. But she's quite scary looking, don't you think? I think once she's got a hat on, she'll be a little less, a little less so. We'll see. There we go. So John is headed back up to the cottage this weekend. He is helping his dad uh, close up his cottage. So they're going to get Herb's cottage all closed up. And then um, the plan is to go back in a few weeks to close up ours. And so Nicholas and I are going to hang out this weekend. My Parents are supposed to be coming to visit on Sunday to meet the new dog and stay overnight. We did not get to celebrate Thanksgiving with them this year because uh, my mom's back was out, so they couldn't come to the cottage. So it's nice that they're going to come on Sunday so we can, we can have a little visit. So Nicholas and I have no plans other than relaxing, settling in with the dog, maybe watching a couple of movies. I'm going to watch some floss tube and get some stitching done. I've got some more sewing to do this weekend. And um, 
I'm going to be working on a project for a very good friend. Uh, she, she may or may not watch these videos. I don't know. She sometimes watches, she sometimes doesn't. So I'm not going to say too much about it, but it's, it's actually, she's not very well. My friend Josh, uh, she lives in the Netherlands and she has, um, I believe it's an autoimmune disorder called neurosarcoidosis and it's debilitating and it's uh, life changing and she's she's struggling a little bit at the moment and I I wanted you know she she's a knitwear designer and that's how we met each other originally and she's just one of the I can't even describe how I feel getting to know her. It's like, you know, even though she's so far away, um, just such a, such a kind, kind heart. And Josh has knit me a shawl and it's in the way it's, it's on the way to me now. And the fact that she did that while she's been feeling so poorly is astonishing to me. But I have some, um, I don't want to give away too much right now because what I'm going to do, it's not going to be a surprise. Josh is going to know what I'm doing, but I'm actually going to film the process so that Josh can watch me make something special for her. And so I'm going to be starting that next week. So what I'm probably going to be doing is adding a very short video midweek on a Wednesday that's going to be all about this special project that I'm going to be making for Josh. And each of these wet little Wednesday videos is kind of going to be a, a little, a little card of friendship for my friend. So I hope you'll join me in wishing her well, because she's a, she's a special, she's a special lady, special lady. Ah, <sighs> okay. Now where am I? I've got three, 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 and three. This is how I'm checking my counting here. Three, three, and three, and the next one should be three as well. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three. I should have one more. And that one's going to be one away. Okay. So one, two, three. There. Whew. fun seeing the hat come to life, isn't it? There we go. I was even half thinking of giving myself a manicure this weekend. I know, don't be shocked. Don't be shocked. Those of you who visit with me every Friday are probably like, what? You're going to have a manicure? I know, crazy, right? These stitchers that have these beautiful fingernails. That's not me. But that's okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven. And then it should be only one away. No, that's not right. What went wrong? What went wrong? Four, five, six, seven. Oh dear. Something has gone wrong, gone awry. Oh, I know, because that's supposed to be three instead of one. That's why. That's why. I'm gonna have to double check. <laughs> I'm gonna have to really double check this when I'm done filming that I've actually done this correctly. So, okay, so I've got five, six, seven. Do you ever do that? Get so, I'm sure you do. I'm, of course you do. Everybody gets carried away with their counting and makes complete and utter mistakes that then they have to rip out. And totally normal. Okay, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I should skip one and I should have three. And looky-loo, 
That looks good to me. There we go. I received the sweetest thing in the mail the other day from uh, Virginia Miller. I believe I've got your name right. I'm going to double check and show it again on Monday. Uh, she won a Because Monday giveaway a while back now. And she mailed me a thank you card, which was not necessary. I have to say, if, you, if, if you're listening to this and you think, oh, I didn't mail not expected or necessary in any stretch of the imagination. Um, but Virginia did, and it was, uh, she'd made it by hand. It was, she paper crafted it. It's beautiful. And she was from, Te she's from Texas, and she included a postcard from a, a Texas postcard that had four different views of Texas. Um, there were, there were a couple of national parks, and then what else was there on there? I can't remember. It's the national parks that stick out in my mind because of how beautiful the scenery was. And I showed it to John and he's like, that's stunning. That's, I mean, that's beautiful. We have to go there. We have to go and visit Texas one day. And I thought that was really cool. So thank you so much for sending me that card because it gave me a different perspective into a landscape that I know nothing about. I really know nothing about, um, about that part of, of, um, the United States. And I just, it just looked, it looked stunningly beautiful. So one day that's now on our bucket list of places to go and visit. And, uh, she also sent me a really wonderful little keychain that has all of these sort of Texas, um, uh, there's an, I think there's an armadillo and a boot and, uh, you know, the, the little, shape of the, I almost call it a province, excuse me, I know it's not a province, of your state. In Canada, we have provinces. Uh, so it's, I will show it properly on Monday because I was absolutely tickled that she'd taken the time to send me this and it was, it was just so lovely. And now we want to visit Texas. So there, look at that. Now I'm not going to go any further because I really need to check that I haven't gone completely sideways, literally, in my counting here for this for this work and make sure that it's correct before I do any more. But I am gonna continue working on this tonight for my Friday off the grid party because, well, it's October. And in fact, not only is it October, but we're closing in on the second half of October, which is just, I, I know we all say this, don't we? We all say this every time that, oh my goodness, time is flying so fast. But literally, time is flying so fast. It's going to be Christmas before you know it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so if you're still with me, if you're still with me at the very end of this rambly, dog-loving Stitch With Me video, I have something very special coming that, um, that I worked on with a fellow podcasting friend who has a business in the UK. And I'll tell you more about her when I actually have these things in my hot little hand, hands, two hands. Um, but I've been working on a little something that is a little special Friday off the grid keepsake but it's also useful and I'm going to have a hundred of them <laughs> and I'm going to be popping them up for sale in the shop as soon as they arrive. So that's just a little teaser that something is coming and I think they're going to be super fun and super useful and they're, I, I am kind of excited about them because I think they're really fun. So that's just a little, a little heads up that something's coming. I'm really hoping that they arrive in the next week and then I can show them to you next Friday. That's my hope. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I plan on enjoying every minute with the big lug of a dog 
who is currently now residing in my home and has completely wormed her way into my heart. <sighs> We're all smitten. I mean, you should see. I'm going to put a picture at the end here because she was snuggled up on John last night on the couch. And it's just, she did one of those big sighs. was the first one that she'd really done since she got here. One of those big dog sighs when you just know that they're content and they know that everything's okay and they're safe and they're happy and they're, 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 they're home. And it was really nice. So I'm going to put that picture in at the end here. Happy weekend. Happy stitching. And I will see you on Monday for Floss Tube on Monday. Take care.